So what can I do for you? Uh, I know we spoke. Yes. So maybe we, you can um, so go through a little bit about your, your business. Okay. Because uh, a lot of the, the, the startups I meet uh, seems to have the same, uh, some of the same issues. Yeah. So I like to condense the information and then That's so fine. they can have a feeling of what other people have uh, uh, challenges they have. So, so tell me a little bit, uh, if I understood correctly, you guys developed two things. One is a, a, a new way to uh, put gas into a cylinder. Yes. So I'm assuming it's the, yes. the cylinder that you use in the home yes. or whatever. Yes. So the gas, okay. Yes. So you use an uh, innovative process to do so. Yeah. Okay. And the second thing I understood was uh, you're trying to build a meter yeah. on the gas tank. Yeah. So I wasn't wrong. Yeah. Okay. That's why I sent you the link of hey, the go. Kenyan guy. Yeah. Hey, because go. that's what they did. Yes. Um, because you don't want to get into, uh, it, it's going to be very expensive yeah. for you to develop that technology. Yeah. I think so far they spend uh, uh, $750,000 uh, just developing. still on research and developing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know they're always looking for partners. I can okay. connect them with you. With that the, they're very cool uh, guys. Uh, um, so explain to me how far are you, how long you've been in business? So we we haven't been in business at all, so... Well, know. when I say business, oh. how long have you been working on uh, this oh, project? Working on the project? Okay, so we started working on the project last year, okay. um, in October. Okay. Um, and we've been working on it ever since. So we is how many of um, you guys? We are six. Six of you guys, yeah. okay. We're six. Um, so I'm half Kenyan, half Uganda. Okay. And then three people are from Kenya, and then okay. there's one Rwanda and one Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah. So we started working on the project last year in October for Hard Price. For, for Hard Price. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, so we were one of... Oh, so that's how you found out uh, yes. you were at the event? Yes. Ah, actually, okay. met, actually met... Oh, you did, Mayor. Yes. Ah, you did. Yeah. Yes. Ah, you did. Yes. I got a chance to review your profile. It's nice. Oh, okay, okay. So we were, we were finalists at regionals and then finalists at nationals. So that's how I met you. Finalist at regionals. regionals and finalists. So you pitched at the... Yes, I had to leave early on. Yes, yes. So, so you did pitch, yeah? Yeah, we did pitch. Oh, okay. We're really trying to like restructure and see, okay, how do we bring out that innovativeness more and how do we like grow from that? Because what we wanted to do is we want to like use food waste. So like any sort of like biodegradable waste, then turn it into biogas. Right. So when you say biodegradable, any type of food? Any type of food. Waste. Compost. Eh? Compost. Yeah. Oh. So like for example, you know the way you have food, um, household waste in your home, mm. the, uh, that kind of waste. Um, okay. Market waste, slaughterhouse waste. So like anything that can be composted and is biodegradable, then it could be put into the digester and then you could produce um, methane from it. So the current biogas that's in the market, they don't have this purification method. Okay. So um, it, the gas is still kind of, so you don't get like the high energy content. So it's, you don't, you're not, it doesn't burn as hot compared to like the other, like LPG. Okay. So what we've done is we've, um, we've done a purification method okay. that like, gives you the same um, heat value as like the normal LPG ga gas that's on the market. But then now it's like renewable and um, locally produced. So that's okay. what we're really trying to push for. So, um, yeah. okay, go ahead. Yeah, so the, basically that's it. And then the smart meter as well. So the smart meter needs to have like kind of like um, a way in which it steps down the pressure. Because like the pressure of the gas will be high. So the way the smart meter needs to be developed is that it also like reduces the pressure. So that when you're cooking your gas, and when you're cooking with the gas, the pressure isn't coming out as hard. Okay, so when you say, um, when you say lower the pressure, I thought the cylinder is already built in all that component. The fact that the cylinder is taking yeah. all that. Yes. I don't want to be too technical because I'm not a technical guy, but yes. I, I just want to understand why why that's why the top has to keep the pressure, pressure. if it's already Okay. So you see, um, there's usually like a pipe, right? From like your cook stove mm. to the cylinder. Yeah. Right? So the gas doesn't like um, it just pulls the pressure in but then it doesn't like reduce the pressure. So for example, let's think about like a, a, a water pump or like a, a gas, um, like a tap. So the, if the water is in the drum, when you 
open the tap, it comes out like a really high pressure. Okay. Right? And sometimes the cook stove, if it comes out at that much pressure, then the cook stove might explode or it might be harmful. Okay. So the smart, the, you need to kind of like make the pressure lower. Okay. So, yeah, so that in... So does it work with the same way with LPG and all that? No, no, no. So the way LPG works is you don't need that. Um, the way LPG works, it's very easy to... It has, you know the regulator that you usually yeah. use? So the regulator that you usually use with LPG does that. It, it steps down the pressure from the gas cylinder. So you, the, you're not using a regular LPG uh, cylinder? cylinder? You can, but it is advised, if we want to put more gas in, the cylinder then we have to um, develop a new kind of cylinder to be able to withhold the pressure but you can use the normal LPG cylinders that are in the market but you just have to but we'll have to manage because our um, own either you way. know LPG are standard across Africa yeah sure you got a so go ahead sorry huh? sometimes I get no 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 it's uh, fine it makes sense I get um, so go ahead, so, so yeah, so you need a special so you, cylinder. So you don't, you can use the normal LPG cylinders okay. in the market, that's fine. Oh, but of course you'd have to like manufacture your own because you're a different company and you can't use other people's LPG cylinder. So it's possible to use the current LPG cylinders in the market. Okay. Um, but then you need to kind of like develop them in a way that is able to withhold the pressure. Because me, what I'm thinking is you guys have found a way to gas, if, is it a, um, yes. a gas? Yes. So purify gas. Yes. So I'm sure you have a process where you can just plug in yes. on the cylinder yes. and then fill up the, the yes. tank and then yes. okay. Um, so so um, so what's the plan now? What would you guys are uh, uh, how far are you from the I'm assuming the purification system has been yeah, so developed yeah, already? We've developed we we have like one purification system that we've it's developed. been tested already? Yeah, and we have a prototype. Okay, that you have a prototype and yeah. all? So we tested the gas that we produced, it's okay. higher content than the whatever. Okay. And then we also have the purification system. So we know how like the system works because we put it. We partnered with some people in um, an engineer in Uganda. Um, okay. So a few of us like went all the way down to Uganda to kind of like work with the prototyping process. But okay. then we brought back the cylinder back here. So have. Oh, so you already have your own cylinder also? Just one. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but you have one that you customize yes. to what you're trying to do. Yes. So what's your business model? What are you so guys, uh, how you visualize the business? Business. So in terms of like us being able to make money, um, we're looking at, so a byproduct of the whole process, we produce like bio fertilizer. So we, we could be able to sell our bio fertilizer and then sell the gas as well. And then also within the process, it, you're able to like um, get like CO2, which you could sell to industries. I, I lost you. Uh, so like from when you're... Um, what do you mean by fertilizer? So part of the process, um, the way it works is because as you, you're decomposing the food waste, mm. the di the, after you've decomposed all the food waste, you get like fertilizer that is produced. From, oh, the, from the, the okay. process. The, the, the challenge in any business is you don't want to do too much. That's true. Because then you stretch yourself, so you run out of money, money. and you close. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But also the problem is if there's no solution to solve your problem and you have to find a way to solve, solve it. it. Uh, without getting too much to know your business. I, I know Pego. Uh, uh, so I know them. They, they, they just want to sell the cylinder. Yeah, they just want to sell the meter. The cylinder, the meter, and then they make the small margins on. Yes. So because their model, for example, is um, the problem with gas is people don't have upfront costs to sure. buy the gas. Sure. So they're solving that problem. Yeah. And actually, I, I don't know if they're the only one, but last time we met, they were still the only one in that space. Please. Because, you know, pay as you go electricity yeah. is very, uh, very popular. Right. Yeah. But in gas, it's still non-existent. Yeah, that's true. And, and I, tr I, I believe that it will work because people now, they don't have to pay up front for the gas they can pay per day, okay. which is huge. Yeah. But I think, uh, I don't know where the traditional gas comes from. It uh, comes from when you're drilling. 
Oh, it, it comes from regular drilling and yeah. all those. Uh, so it's a fossil fuel. So how's your cost? Is based on your estimate? So we could actually our cost would be about eighteen percent lower than the normal gas that's in the market. Eighteen or eighty? Eighteen. 18 ah, one eight. Okay. One eight. Um, I mean, first you have to decide what business you're in. Are you in a gas uh, um, business? Are you in a meter business? Uh, the second thing is, obviously, your competition is going to be uh, LPG. Yeah, that's pretty much your competition. So um, you say you can be cheaper than them. Yeah. But I would definitely not be in a cylinder business trying yeah. to redevelop because yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy. You're going to spend millions and millions of dollars trying to change because there's already cylinders existing. So yeah. you're going to have to adapt your technology yeah. to the existing cylinder. Everything you do in business, trying to utilize what's already available to minimize your cost. You know, that's the key. I know in prototyping, uh, is different, but you do not want to be in a cylinder business. I'm telling you that already, because now you have to, now you have to be. If you're in a cylinder business, you have to develop the distribution of those cylinders. You not, you can't compete with those yeah, guys. They already have the value chain online, yeah, and you you lose with that game unless you can raise a lot of money. Yeah. I think your gas supply business is very interesting. Yeah. I think you know, supplying gas. And because, so I know another technology that allow you to uh, home uh, gas system. I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. Actually, I met one of the guys. Uh, they were part of the finalists uh, not at the, the green, green challenge. Green challenge. But um, it's a home system yeah. where you dump your food yeah. and you like connect to the... Uh, you connect it directly. Yeah. A very interesting technology. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to get one. Oh, really? my house just to test it. Test how it is. So uh, there are like many. There's like home biogas, sim gas. Hmm? There's like different people trying to do it. So like uh, flexi gas, home biogas, sim gas. There's mm -hmm. like many different players. I, I met this guy. It's just a box. Yeah. And then you just dump. You yeah. say you have to do nothing just to dump food. Food waste. Uh, but I, I don't know the problem. But I think you know, get how portable your system is. So that's so. What we want to do is we just want to be able to put the gas that we're producing into the cylinder. So you have to centralize the production. System. Centralize our production system, so and then have like a, you know like the way um, SP has like the distribution chains of like yeah, you go yeah, to well, the, the yeah. So you know like how you go to the um, someone does like a gas delivery of a cylinder to your house. Mm. So that's what we want to do because we realize that not everyone wants to be able to have like their dumping food waste in their um, digester every day. And then also in urban settings, so our target is like urban market. We're not looking at the rural markets because the rural markets you can have people with their own like home systems, right? But then for the urban markets for people who don't want to have their own home systems. So it's your urban, you guys are focusing on the urban market? Yes, we're focusing on the urban market. Okay. I don't know the statistic, but I'm assuming they consume more gas yes, in the urban market than in rural areas. Yes, yeah. okay. but then of course still charcoal is still a really high um, in, rural. In, in rural and urban. But you know here they're trying to change the... And yeah, exactly, because in here they want to reduce it by like 15%, but then still currently like about like 85% of the population still uses charcoal. Actually, urban people don't have education about exactly. the cost of charcoal. Yeah. I was talking to Jonas and I told him that there is a gas cooker. Yeah. I think it costs 25000 Yeah. Then you add the cylinder yeah. and then your, your cost will be between 15 to 18,000 yeah. in the next three months. Yeah. And he's like, no way. And I told him, really? He's like, yeah, I use charcoal, but I use like 35K yeah. in three months. Yeah. So I told him that's the cost. He didn't believe me yeah. until he went and asked the guys at sell gas. Exactly. And he moved to gas because of that. Exactly. Because there's a lack of education in yeah. terms of like, um, they don't know. telling people. Can, can you make your wife, I can't load my, my internet over. Oh, okay. Make your wife so I can load, so I can put this internet on. Sorry. Connect so, to something called uh, NAS S8. It's one of okay. that. So what no makes more, uh, so, so briefly, yeah. because I, I think um, today at least I want to give you some pointers of, of how to get some some funding yeah. and how to structure a little bit of your, your company. Yeah. Um, but but let, let's walk through. So okay. just walk me through. So, how it works. Uh, and, and just be as simple as you can. Yeah, huh? sure. Um, 
So you, you're going to have a centralized point of production. Yes. Okay. So you bring the waste, the yes. bio waste, yes. into this facility. Yes. You do your process. Yes. And you have cylinders yes. that you get. Yes. So my question to you is, yes. can you micro production this uh -huh. system? Uh -huh. Meaning instead of doing one big production, can you have like, do you know uh, this water filtration system? What was the water system? Jibu. Uh -huh. Jibu. You know Jibu? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it? Because it would be very interesting if you can do, instead of a centralized one point per city, you can do per neighborhood, for example. But it depends how small your, your technology can get. Yeah. Because you know, um, waste collection is, is expensive. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming you're going to have to work with the waste collector. Yeah, so we formulated a partnership with Copen. Here. Yeah. Okay. Copen, yeah. And they, they like they're the biggest waste collection company. Okay. So and they do they do they do the sorting. They do the sorting yeah. for you? Yeah, so okay. they've included the cost that they've given us, they included the sorting for us as well. So they do the sorting and they get you the food. Mm -hmm. Okay, then if they do that then you can centralize your production. You don't need but there's some countries yeah. they have a very poor collection of waste. waste. Sure. Uh, it's always, you know, when you when you develop a, a business, yeah. because Africa is so fragmented, yeah. it's not a, 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 a uniform uh, economic system. Yeah. You always have to, uh, because you don't want to develop a model. Well, of course, you can develop a model specifically for Rwanda, mm -hmm. specifically for each country. Uh -huh. But you have to know if your system can be adaptable to to, 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 to different models, because that's also something investors will ask you. Because, you know, they're going to ask you, okay, well, you can scale. Yes, Rwanda has a very good structure of collection, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How are you going to do it in, in other countries where they don't have that structure? Yeah. Yeah. When waste collection sometimes is non-existent, yeah. you know? Are well, you going to build that? Value. Yeah, are you going to build that value chain yourself? Are you going to... Because if you're going to bring investment into this stuff, you have to show that it's scalable yeah. as a business. Yeah. Now, the need is there. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, so here you can centralize. I'm, I'm not sure how long. So what, what stage are you guys in right now? Are you still in a development stage? Are you about to start doing some small production stage? What, what stage are you in? So a little like in between the development stage and the production stage. But because we've already developed like the hotel, we know where we're getting everything from. Like we have that stuff covered, but then we don't have the, the funding to be able to. So it's like a little bit of confusion between like the development stage and like the little bit of production stage. So we're like in that gap. Okay. And you need, so I wish there was a competition uh, you guys have been perfect for uh, called, uh, so um, it's from Kenya. Well, they're from the States, but they're based in, in Kenya. Uh, it's called um, iShow Hardware. iShow, I S H O Hardware. Um, they do it every year. You guys can check it out next year. Unfortunately, you you too early for the green challenge. Uh -huh. uh, never heard to. Uh, so let, let me let me let me back a little bit because um, first thing you guys have to structure uh, a business. Yeah. Do you have a business plan written already? Yes. That shows the financial, the projections, what you're trying to achieve, what's your return? Okay, do you have a value proposition? A pitch deck? Yes. You have a pitch deck? Yes. Um, when you get a chance, to it out okay. so I can check it out. Um, you need to have a value proposition. Basically, a value proposition is what, what problem are you solving and how are you solving it? And how are your competitors not able to solve it? But the, the value proposition is in one minute you should be able to explain your business. Uh, that, you know, that's how they. they and, and, and going back to value proposition, are you guys have done any accelerated program? No. Okay, that's the first thing you guys need to do. You guys need to participate in an accelerator. Because accelerated programs help you structure better your company to make it more enticing for investors. Now, to find the right, there's a lot of accelerated programs out there. They, they, most of them are free. Some of them even invest in your company. 
the key is to find accelerated programs that fit into what you're trying to accomplish. If you not, if you can't deal with rejection, if you can't deal with some failure, you're not cut up for entrepreneurship. Because it will happen. And some of us take things personally. We reject it with things our project is not really meant. Uh, it might not work. Just because the opinion of somebody said this project cannot, is, shouldn't be funded by us, that's not mean that your project is not fundable. And that doesn't mean that your project cannot make money. It's just that that individual just didn't get what you're trying to do, or that individual is not interested in what you do. So, um, I used to apply to between 20 to 30 competitions every year. And I used to win maybe two or three a year. So, over 90, I mean, over 90 percent of rejection I used to have. But that's normal. You cannot win them all. It's impossible. It's not impossible. It's meant. It's not meant. To, you know. And um, so that's something you guys have to really. You know, if you don't have a ten-year plan, if you yourself, your team, are not, especially in the energy sector, anytime you bring a new innovation or a new process or a new way to do things, you have to. Um, you have to factor in 10 to 15 years. You know, I always tell people, uh, Amazon is a perfect example. It took them 20 years to be profitable. You know, Amazon is the most yeah. valuable company, company in the world. Yeah. Well, I think, no, or one of the most, I don't know, I think it's between them and Apple. But I know for sure he's the richest man in the world. Yeah. They said. But for 20 years, that company was not making money. So that's the type of commitment you guys have to give yourself. That's what I was, I was saying at the, you better understand that this is not a short term, you know, this is not a, hey, I got a great idea, people are gonna come in, give me money, and I'm gonna blow up. And no, it, it, entrepreneurship is not like that. Less than 0.0001%, it happens like that, but the rest of us, it doesn't. It's trials and tribulation. Trial. There'll be time where you're gonna to want to quit. There'll be time you you are tired of having to beg for money all the time. That's the real life of entrepreneurship, and that's why I always try to share that uh, uh, when I when I speak in conferences because too many of us, especially the youth, we buy into this uh, media sensation of entrepreneurship is is the coolest thing. No, it's the hardest thing you're gonna do. So it's, it's a mindset. You have to prepare your mind about it. Uh, now, saying all this, there's certain things you can do to shorten the time of accomplishing your goal. You know? And um, we live in the internet age, information. All the information is online. And I always say, I, I used to, well, I still, not as much now, we have partners. But I spent, I used to spend two, three hours every day looking for competition. So you're gonna have to look, and, and the, the key word, uh, because we, we all, I mean, we're living in the same spaces, green tech competition, those are the key words you should put on Google. Um, innovation competition, or innovation award, or green tech award, um, and, and you do it once a month. Uh, and you check. You go through 10 pages and you check. They have dates. I, use, I put together a database of, of, of competition. Some we won, most we didn't. If you go to our website, for example, you'll see all the competition we won. That, some of them actually you can apply for because you, you fit into that criteria. But um, I, I, I put a, a database. I don't remember where I was. I put it somewhere, I'll send it to you. You still have it? Yeah, yeah, send it. Opportunity pipeline. Oh, the file? Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you can send it to her. <laughs> it has uh, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of, of, uh, of competition. Of competition. Year, next year. You know, and, and, and uh, I was trying to make it easier for, because so you guys don't have to go through all this stuff. But, but do competition. You know, it's free. It only takes time 
out of your schedule to do it. And the reward is huge. Some of them are 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 100,000. The last one was 100,000 euros. So, you know, you never know. But, and also it, it, it forces you to practice, to, to practice your pitch, to understand your business. Because when you, when you apply hundreds and hundreds of time applications, you, you tend to learn from your failure, how, failure, how to, to polish, how to improve, how to do all those things. Uh, but while you're doing this, you need to really focus on what's your business. Me, I think you're in the energy production of, of gas. Yeah. Um, I will not try to be in the cylinder business. Yeah. So you need to adapt your gas to, the, to, the to what's existing in the market. Uh, another thing is, um, I know LPG, they use traditional gas, but you never know. Companies, uh, those big companies that do that own the LPG technology and all, they always look for new ways. You know, because you, you don't just solve the gas, but you, you, you're using and you're collecting waste. You're using waste uh, to produce the gas. Yeah. Okay. What's happening now in, in, uh, in, in uh, what's happening now? Governments are promoting circular economy. Yeah. How to reuse the waste that brings value at some point? Mm -hmm. You know, refurbish, recycling, use the recycling to do uh, some other products. Yeah. You fit perfectly into that space. Yeah. So you're not selling gas, but you're also solving problem of waste, bio waste, which is a big problem. You know, that should be also formulated in your business plan. You know, um, so that that's num number two. Number three, you need to. Um, so the meter, I'm not sure how. So, so you're trying to have a meter to, to solve the compression, but if you're using, if you solve that problem with the LPG, then you don't need that meter. Yeah, anymore. we just need to partner with people like Pego to make our gas more accessible. To yeah, yeah. Now, Pego will be perfect for you guys. Yeah. The only issue I see with them is you're still on the startup uh, stage. Yeah. And they're looking for more people that are in. The, so you may want to start the conversation now. I'll still give you the introduction. Yes. Yeah. But I want to warn you already yeah. because uh, uh, they, they, they're looking for some companies that are already kind of established into that space, but they can give you some uh, some feedback. Uh, now, my question, who, who are the biggest distributor of, uh, of gas? Yeah. So the biggest distributors of gas in re like retail is yeah. um, Kigali Gas and Safe Gas. Kigali Gas, Safe Gas, and then SP does like okay. They just so they do they do the, the yeah, fill up. They, they, yeah, they, so they literally import the gas from um, the Middle East or from like other African countries. Import the gas that they get, and then do the whole filling it into the cylinder, mm -hmm. and then also like have partnerships with like the small retail shops to have them be the people that sell. Because gas what you're gonna have to decide is. Are you a B2B business? Yeah. Or are you a B2C business? So I don't know your competition. I don't know how willing they are to work with, with you. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you have a cheaper product that does not affect the quality, then you may want to, in the beginning, be a B2C business. Because customer, you see, a lot of them may, may be uh, tied to the they may have an exclusive contract. Exactly. That'll be very difficult for you to break. Yeah. I'm assuming. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, they do. Ah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> so, if they do, then right now you're too small. Yeah. To to for them to be interested in your yeah. business. Yeah. You. So you should, in the beginning, have a B2C business. Where you have an app, yeah. where customer can automatically they they low on on refill, boom, they 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 on demand. Yeah. People are willing to pay a small cost yeah. for convenience. Yeah. 
So you need to map up this whole value chain and see how can you do it better by incorporating technology. That's how you're going to win. I'm telling you, that's how you're going to win. Because the first thing investors are going to tell you is, why should I go to you instead of the way it is now? What is your differentiator? What differentiates you from your competition? And if you don't have that answer, I promise you, you're not going to raise any capital. But if you can really show that you have a really strong differentiator, not only that you're recycling, you're doing good for the environment, those are great things. But at the end of the day, investor wants to know how they're going to make it. Money. It's, good, it's good for the story, but for investors, yeah, there is some impact investing, yeah. But the reality is even them, they want to make money. So they want to know, how am I going to make money? And what separates you from your competition? And those are the two things you have to set the most. Everything else, the financial and all that, is important, but it's not the real key. Now, if you have an innovation that nobody has, it's a little bit different. You know, because you, you have to show them that that innovation is needed. Yeah. But if you're in a space that already exists, yeah. you have to show how can you do this better. Yeah. More efficiently, in a cost-effective way, save customer money, etc. Et et so those are the things. And whatever you develop now will change as you grow. That's okay. But you need to have those premises already uh, discussed. Because when you adapt your business plan, when you adapt your, your pitch and all those things, you adapt the premise, but they're already there. Because as you grow, things change, things are different. But you need to know, you need to be able to tell me what's your whole value chain. And in the beginning, B2C is your best way to do it. Because I think B2B will take too much capital and time to try to convince somebody to adopt your, your, your gas on your way to do it. Yeah. So first, uh, you need to solve that uh, cylinder things and come up with a value chain that is low cost, on demand. I will call it on demand gas. I'm just thinking out loud, yeah. but that, will, that should be part of your value proposition. With the first, I don't know if it exists yet, but you're the first and only, I know here there's no on demand gas. Yes, when you order, they come to you, but when you got to re resupply, you have to go to them. So I would say, and that's just an idea, but with the first and only on-demand gas using bio, that's a value proposition. Value, and, and if you go on Google, you'll see the, is, is, is how you sell, no, is what you sell, how you sell it, and uh, something else, I don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. But I learned that from um, uh, Accelerating Program. Yeah. So between now, what, what's the day? By, by June, you should have selected what Accelerated Program. I always recommend two Accelerated Program. No more than two. Uh, I've done nine and it's useless. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, you don't need to do all that. Um, I did because I didn't know I was using that to network, to do that, but you don't need, you don't need to do that. Another thing you guys need to really work on is your, your, your social media process. Yeah. You know, as I told you on the email, yeah. investment is about trust. Yeah. Well, every, even for me, I'm not even investing. The first thing I did is I Googled. Okay. Okay. I <laughs> you know, that's the first thing. If you have no online presence, to me that's already a risk. Yeah. Because when an investor gives you money, yeah. I don't care how great your business is. The first thing he wants to make sure is that you're not going to use that money, that you're legit, yeah. that you're a legit company, yeah. you're not going to waste that money or disappear with it. Yeah. And it's even harder for African entrepreneurs. Yes. Because most of the investment will come from outside. We still don't have the right ecosystem for innovative investment. Unfortunately, in Africa, we're still focusing on other stuff. But there's still yet innovative fund that are African, that understand the ecosystem. So, nine out of 10, we have to sell our ideas outside the continent. Yeah. And when you sell your idea outside the continent, the first thing they look at you is you have, how can I trust you? And it's not their fault. They, most of them don't even know the ecosystem here. The idea they have about Africa is a negative idea. Trust me, I do a lot of pitches outside. You know, so they don't even understand the problematics. I remember I was pitching about 
um, Wi-Fi connectivity and all those things, offline, online. They couldn't understand why people didn't have, all people didn't have the smartphones Smart with the internet on it because that's what they're accustomed to. And it's not their fault. Most of them you're going to pitch to never even been to Africa. You know? So you're pitching an African solution to people that don't even know the African ecosystem. So you have to be very, very good. Not only are selling your idea, but very good at having an online presence. And what I mean by online presence, your business, not yourself, yourself is secondary, but your business should have a presence on Twitter, your business should have a presence on Facebook, your business should have a presence on LinkedIn, and you should have a website. And in the beginning, once a week, or twice a week, you guys upload content. I don't care how small it is, I don't care how irrelevant it might be for you guys, but I guarantee you, it will build your audience. So, ah, today we've accomplished this with some pictures. Boom! Today we participated in the whole prize. We were finalists. Oh, great, we didn't win, but the fight continues. Boom! Picture the team. I promise you, it's huge. I found my first investment through LinkedIn. Wow. That's how they found me. I always tell people to that story. Because I post all I post every day. Mm. I post all the time. When people put me with our company, they can see all the awards we've won, all yeah. the media attention we've had and all this. Because I make sure it's it's there. Media also is great, but you guys should do that when you have a product already launching it off. Um, because media can bring you a lot more attention and if you're not ready, the momentum dies really quickly. But as, as a social media presence, you should have a presence, you should have a website. You should definitely have those things because the first thing investor asks you, even competition, yeah. put your yeah, website, website on. put your Twitter account of your company, yeah. put your LinkedIn account of your company. Yeah. And they check those things. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot YouTube. You guys should have a lot. Video uh, is, is the next biggest thing. Yeah. Pictures are still good, but video speak more than that. You know, and you should document your process, document your, you don't have to say too much. You don't have to talk about the IP, the intellectual property and all. We should just take videos of, oh, today we accomplished this. Oh, this is our setup today. Oh, you can show how you put the cylinder and all those things. <laughs> and, and all, you know, when you get your first customer, wow. You know, you document, you document your journey. That's really what social media is about. You're documenting your journey, not just for you, but you're documenting your journey for anyone who's gonna come in the future. Because they're gonna ask you where you've been, how you achieve and all those things. And yes, you can speak about it, but if you have documentation, that speaks more than anything. You can see on our YouTube channel on our first version, our second version of the kiosk, our third version, our latest version. You can see this thing. It's not just me telling you, you can see it. So you know I'm telling you the truth and you know how far I've been to get where I am today. So no, you don't have to prove yourself as much. You can document. So social media is so underused in Africa and so powerful, you know. So you guys need to really work on that. And because you have a big team, you can delegate, you know. I started by myself, so I can tell you it was very difficult. But I, I wish I had a co-founder and all this thing. But if you have a team, you delegate. One team is in charge of doing competition, finding the competition on Google. Another team is in charge of the social media presence. Another team member is in charge of finding uh, accelerated programs and all those things. Delegate, delegate, delegate as much as you can, based on their strength. One of the key, the, the key strength of a leader is, is, to, is to find out the strength and weakness of their, of their team member. And it's a, it's a skill set that comes with time. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, necessarily come immediately, and that will take time. You guys still young. You guys are at ALU, right? Yes. Oh, okay. I know it's a very good university. I, 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 I think I've, I, I've checked your founder YouTube channel from time to time. Yeah. Very, very uh, charismatic. Yeah, he is. Uh, 
And I know you guys, they, they, they really stress a lot about leadership. They do. Too. So that's very good. Um, so, so those are the things you got to work. Um, there, there's money. There's, I won't say, there's a lot of money. In fact, in the matter, there's a lot of money in the space you guys are. The way you structure yourself is, is key. Uh, you gotta, you always gotta make yourself bigger than who you, what, where you are today. Everybody knows that we all start small. Everybody knows that. At least investors, they know that. We all start small. Nobody start at the top. They all know that. But they want to know that you have a vision for your company. That's what they're looking for. They want to know that you're the right person to lead this company. And for that, they want to make sure that you have a vision. And if you get caught up, oh, we small, then I know. They, don't, they know that already. But if you can paint them the future really well and precise, you can't lose. You can't lose. Because that's what's lacking. You know, there's great company out there, but their leadership is, is horrible. You know, because they get caught up on where they are now instead of focusing on where they're trying to go. Um, but yeah, Accelerator program will, will allow you to polish all those aspects. Uh, you need more time for that uh, than, than this, than this uh, time we have. Because most Accelerator program is three to six months. Yeah. They really sit you down and go through all your documentation. Another thing you guys are gonna have to and, and also that's part of the accelerator program. I think, I'm trying to think if, um, you need to check Vail Cap, Cap, Village Capital. It's one of the best accelerator program I've been a part of. Um, but I'm, I haven't followed it. They, they're based in Kenya. Um, there is also um, this one, I don't know if you know it, the one in, in the Netherlands, they, they specialize in energy. energy. The good thing is, I, I, will, I will start with them. Because Rockstar. I, huh? Rockstar. I will definitely start with them. I will send you an intro. Well, no, you have, no, so you have an intro. Well, I, I'll send you an intro. I'll introduce you to Rockstar. Okay. I'll just do the intro, because right? okay. I don't know the process. But they specialize in, in renewable yeah. energy. Uh, but a lot of those accelerated programs, they post it on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and all those things. And again, do a search. Be very selective. Huh? Don't just apply because, oh, you want to be part of something. No, make sure that they bring value to you. Because they're really going to help you structure your company to the next level. Because the fight is not on the ground. And the fight on the ground is very important, but it's not the only fight. Documentation is also a big part because again, when investors, when you talk to people, those are what they're going to see. They're not going to see it well. Before they get to the ground, they got to see these documents. And is this document only professional? They look all over the place. They won't even spend time with you because they get hundreds and hundreds of applicants. I'm talking about investors. Yeah. I won't focus on investment right away because another thing about investment. The, the less you have done on the ground, the more chunks of your company you're able to take. Yeah. And you, you want to you use less, you want to take, um, you want to use grants and competition as long as you can before you bring in the rest. Because when you have sales, that already gives you leverage to an investor. Because if you have no sale, you just have the innovation technology, mm, you won't be like, well, but if you have sales, that shut people down real quick because hey, we have sales, we know where we're going, blah blah blah. We just need X amount of money to do this, 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 this. this. So I would definitely work on those key things. Um, and, and I will work them now. Another thing I always see is I mentor a lot of startups, I tell them three months later, they're still in the same position they were when we first met. And I can tell you, I, and I, I always say this thing, and I always stress, this is a war zone. Now. It is. This is a war zone. There's hundreds and thousands and thousands of companies out there. They might not do exactly what you're trying to do, but they're trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Your goal 
is to step up to be the best than anybody else. That's the way I do. I'm going to war and there's no prisons. That, that's just the mentality you have to have. The longer you take time to execute, the longer results will come and the less momentum you will have. You know, and those things don't take long. In a month or two, you should have already selected which accelerator program you're going to apply, selected what competition you're going to uh, apply, um, social media, that should take a week, all the social media presence, maybe two weeks for the website. You know, you guys should have a personal, uh, uh, um, when you have your website, personalized email. When you talk to investors, don't use Gmail. Yeah. By the way, there is a company called Imaginator, I don't know if you know about it. To give you a, a, a you call it Nishati, right? Yeah. So to give you an email at Nishati yeah. for one year. Yeah. The whole company, five, seven emails. Yeah. You are Nishati, your friend at Nishati. It's just 20,000 here. Oh, wow. At Imaginate, 20,000 francs a year. Imagine it. Imagine it, yeah. Don't, don't run. But even if you Google on Kigali, even on Kigali Life, there's like hundreds of companies in Rwanda here that do the, the email thing, the web hosting thing. It's cheap now. So if you give out a company email as Gmail, hey, hey. Yeah, that's true. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, it depends. If, you, if it's a conversation, but if you try and talk to an investor, for example, you do the Gmail after you have built a relationship. In the beginning, you send through a company email. Because again, impression is key. They're, they're human just like me and you. Imagine you, always tell, Always put yourself in their shoes. You're an investor. You get a Gmail message about an investment. Yeah. Okay, you might go through the email and all, and then he asks for a website and says, oh, we're working on it. Oh, that's, that's already, you're dead in the water. Because you only have one chance to get an investment. You don't have too many chances. Um, there is also a fellowship that will be interesting for you. And they specialize in your space also. Acumen. Are you are you aware of Acumen? I've seen them before. Acumen is specialized in renewable energy for low income people. If you're gonna be in an urban area, don't waste your time. They really want to see solutions in uh, in uh, in rural areas and, and I believe your your technology in the long run can be adapted to yeah. them. That's something that you guys can already think about. Not just uh, uh, urban area. There's huge, uh, there's huge effort now to build solution for refugee camps. Yeah. And your solution will be perfect because now they can produce, there's a lot of waste, uh, bio waste in those camps also. They gotta eat, they gotta, if you can have solution for them in the future, don't focus too much on that now, but that's just some concept you can think about already for the future. Because the more problem you solve, the more chance you have to attract different type of uh, funding. Uh, but I don't want to create too much confusion for you because it can get overwhelmed. Uh, because that's that's one aspect of our business. We're also developing a business case for refugee camps. Uh, of course, your model will have to be different. Your approach will have to be different. But I always, I always push the envelope. Always push the envelope. Because we live in a world now that, you know, it's, it's a global warming and all these things, it's some real shit happening. So we, we really need to push the effort. Don't get comfortable on what you're sitting on. Always trying to push the effort. Because somewhere out there, somebody is trying to compete with you. You know, you don't need to know that person yet. You just have to have that in your mindset. That somebody out there is trying to compete with you. So always push yourself to get, get better. But I think that's a good start for you guys. Um, me, I'm open. You can contact me in a few weeks or a few months. But if you don't, if you don't show me progress, I, I'm not going to waste my time. I, I like to be honest. I always tell that to you. Because I'm here to help you guys, but I can't help you if you're not helping yourself. Talking for the sake of talking is not going to do any good to nobody. Uh, but you have a great thing here. This is a great idea. I see a lot of ideas uh, through my
my different uh, conferences and all. And I, I really said, uh, this is a great idea. If you guys can polish it, make it better, you know, uh, uh, structure it and all, you got a great opportunity uh, to build a business around it. Because by the way, is a huge problem. Not just in Africa, all over the world. And you, you can even do because what happened when the the waste is uh, put in landfills. So after you're done using it, you put it in landfill. No, no, no. Um, the waste. What happens after? Or it? No. So it when decompose, you use it, it decomposes. I don't even know why. And what does it become? Fertilizer. It becomes fertilizer. Yeah. So byproduct of this yes. is the fertilizer. Yes. So you can turn it to fertilizer after you finish it. Yes. That should be on your business. I think as we go, um, if some come up, I'll, I'll definitely share with, with you. I hope that will give you some insight yeah. of what direction to take. Yeah. But you guys, this is a great technology. So I, I wish you guys the best. And um, let's stay in touch. And then uh, I'll let you engage me. Yes. My mind is somewhere else all yes. the time. So in two, three months, you can shoot me an email, let me know where you are. So I can refresh and see what else I can uh, share with you guys. Okay. Or you can pop in here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, most of the time I'm here. Or you can check with me first before you come. Sounds good? So I hope that's helpful and then uh, good luck. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Yes. No problem.